There was unrest in many areas of Europe in the late 1700s due to the Napoleonic era. Napoleon had won many battles in Spain, Poland, and Italy, taking control in these countries. His next conquest was Britain. In 1803, Britain declared war on France, and by 1815, Napoleon had finally met his demise at the Battle of Waterloo. There had been very little migration to America during the Napoleonic Thirty Year Siege. The Irish, in the 1830s, were plagued with a cholera epidemic, and by 1845, Ireland was also experiencing failure in their potato crop. A strange fungus, like organism, spread rapidly through the potato fields in Ireland, which destroyed half of the potato crop in 1845. For the next seven years, 75% of the potato crop was spoiled. In a three-year period, 750,000 Irish starved to death. Many Irish leave the homeland and make up the other one-third of the migration to America. In 1849, 220,000 Irish leave ports in Ireland, mostly from Liverpool. This is near the peak of the Irish potato crop failure, and thousands of people are starving to death. Many young Irishmen actually had left for America during the cholera epidemic 20 years earlier because America was building canals. The Erie Canal, with their many contractors, needed cheap labor. Actually, there were salesmen coming to England, Germany, and Italy looking for laborers for manual labor and also skilled workers. With his father's consent, Patrick packs a suitcase with a couple changes of clothes and an extra pair of shoes from his uncle's shop, plus his birth certificate, proving he is an Irish countryman. Having little money, he finds he can get to America by working on the ship during passage, by signing a contract and traveling in steerage class. If he hasn't earned $22 during the days crossing the Atlantic, he is obligated to work at the docks of the steamship line in New York until full payment is made. Traveling across the Atlantic in late May of 1865, he is met with good weather. Finally, on the 13th day, we arrive in New York Harbor and I am told I will have a few more days of work for the steamship line at the dock area. I pass customs inspection at the Castle Garden Migration Center being escorted by steamship representatives as many of us in steerage are still under their contract. As Patrick walks to the Irish ward in the tenement district, he sees it must be washing day with clothing and sheets hung above the streets. Some areas are not very clean with sewer water in the street. And then he sees poor children playing by a dead horse. In a cleaner section of the Bronx, he sees the newsboys selling newspapers. They must be starting out to sell their papers. I could sell newspapers. I wonder what I could profit from selling these papers. Patrick reminds himself, I have to write a letter to my uncle tonight. Also thinking, I'm not that good at spelling and I need to improve on my writing and reading skills. Patrick went to the Children's Aid Society and met Mr. Tracy, who is in charge of admission. He knows from my accent I am from Liverpool and alone in the city. 
He was pleased I have a job and that I want to attend night classes. I am expected to pay $2 a week, room and board, and I am required to put my savings in the community bank at the Boys Lodge. My new address is 44th Street. Patrick likes living at the Children's Aid Society Boys Lodge and finds out there are other Children's Aid Society locations in the city for orphan girls, also a lodge for much younger boys and girls. Patrick now attends night classes at the lodge. Some of the boys often have a hard time staying awake. The City Council of New York City is very pleased with the Children's Aid Society getting these poor, neglected children off the streets, who some call thieves and street urchins. <laughs>